Hello friends, in this video we're going to be talking about Microsoft Fabric, what it is, how it's useful, how it affects us, so let's get to it. Hello, my name is Austin Leibel and I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works and we do training on different Microsoft products like Power BI, Synapse Analytics, on T-SQL, on the Power Platform. And today we're gonna to be talking about the new hot conversation around Microsoft Fabric coming out of Microsoft Build 2023. Now, let's talk a little bit about what Fabric is and how it's useful, but I do wanna mention that Fabric is currently in preview mode, meaning these features are being actively designed and developed. They may not be complete, they're made available on a preview basis. So you can go and test these features in production environments and scenarios and provide feedback. But Pragmatic Works wanted to go ahead and get started covering some of these many topics so we understand the core concepts and ideas around Fabric so that when it hits general audience, we're ready to go and so are you. So what is Fabric? How does it affect me? How does it affect my different users? And what's important for all the stuff we're gonna be covering today? Be on the lookout for many more videos on this topic coming up in the upcoming weeks. So Microsoft Fabric is this end-to-end -end analytics solution with full service capabilities including data movement, data lakes, data engineering, integration, data science, real-time analytics, and business intelligence all backed by the shared platform that provides really awesome security, governance, and compliance capabilities as well. So your organization no longer has to go through and create all these different individual analytic services from multiple vendors. Instead, we can use a streamlined solution that's easy to connect with, onboard, and operate. Fabric's gonna integrate different technologies that Microsoft already has, like Azure Data Factory, Synapse Analytics, Power BI, into this unified single product that's going to empower different Power BI users, business professionals, and data engineers alike to unleash the potential of their data and lay the foundation for this introduction to AI being introduced into our society as we uh, learn to work and, and deal with uh, helpful t tools like uh, ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot. Now, the data lake is going to be the foundation on which all the different fabric services are built. And the Microsoft Fabric Lake, also known as One Lake, is the core concept to this. It's built into the fabric service and provides a unified location to store organizational data where the experiences operate. So One Lake is a fabric lake-centric architecture that provides a single integrated environment for data professionals and the business to collaborate on data projects. Think of it as one drive for data. One Lake combines storage locations throughout different regions and clouds into a single location without having to move or duplicate data. So like many applications are pre-wired to use your organizational OneDrive, all the different compute workloads in Fabric are designed to work with One Lake. One Lake is built on something known as the Azure Data Lake Storage. So Azure Data Lake Storage is going to support different files inside of it called Parquet, Delta, CSV, JSON, and many more. And what this means is that all the different compute engines in Fabric are automatically going to store their data in One Lake in the open source Delta Lake format. So while it does support many different types of data, it's all about Delta when it comes down to it. Now, Microsoft Fabric also offers a comprehensive set of analytics experiences that are gonna work together seamlessly. Each experience is going to be tailored to a specific persona or what are you going to be doing with data. Fabric includes these product experiences for an end-to-end -end analytical need. So one of the first ones that we're going to cover is Power BI. Power BI is the world's leading business intelligence platform. It ensures business owners that can access data from Fabric quickly and intuitively with better decisions with data. Now, hopefully you're aware of Power BI, you use it. We talk about Power BI on this channel all the time. So it's not new that Power BI is going to be a part of this, but all the other aspects playing in and working with Power BI are going to really unleash the capability of Fabric. 
Now, data engineering is a term that people throw out there to say, you know, I want to uh, move data from here to there. I want to do ETL. But the data engineering platform inside of Fabric is going to provide a world-class Spark platform with great authoring experiences, enabling data engineers to perform large-scale data transformation and democratize data throughout the lake house. Now, does that mean I'm going to go through and be a data engineer just because I use Fabric? No not really. There's going to be experiences that you use inside of Fabric that are suited for your general Power BI user and then ones that are also suited for your general uh, data engineer user. We're going to have different people working in the same environment to integrate all these different tools together as one. Now, one of the other tools that comes from Synapse Analytics and uh, kind of has to do with data engineering is going to be known as Azure Data Factory. And Azure Data Factory is going to combine the simplicity of Power Query data flows with the scale and power of Data Factory pipelines as well. Now, we're also going to have data science, and data science is going to enable you to build, deploy, and operationalize machine learning models seamlessly inside of your Fabric experience. It integrates Azure Machine Learning to provide built-in experiment tracking and model registry. Data scientists are going to be empowered to enrich organizational data with predictions and allow business intelligence users and analysts to integrate those predictions into their reports. Now, we're also going to have the data warehouse experience to provide industry-leading SQL performance and scale, a fully separate compute from storage, enabling independent scaling of both components. And additionally, it's going to natively store data in the open Delta Lake format on that one lake. Now, observational data, which is collected from various sources such as apps, IoT devices, human interactions, and so many others, are going to be a part of what we call real-time analytics, or RTA. The data is often semi-structured in formats like JSON or text and comes in at high volumes with shifting schemes. And these characteristics make it uh, really hard for traditional data warehousing platforms to work with. So real-time analytics is best in class. Uh, it's going to be awesome for observational data analytics. Now, let's break some of these down a little bit more granularly. Data engineering in Microsoft Fabric is going to enable users to build, design, and maintain infrastructures and systems that enable their organizations to collect, process, and analyze really vast and large amounts of data or big data scenarios. And one way we're going to do that is, of course, with Apache Spark. Apache Spark job definitions are a set of instructions that define how to execute jobs on a Spark cluster. It's going to include information such as the input and output of data sources, the transformations, configurations, and things like that. Spark job definitions allow you to submit batch or streaming jobs to a Spark cluster and apply different transformational logic to the data hosted on your lake house, among many other things as well. We can access Spark through the data engineering product experience with something known as notebooks. A notebook is when you want to go through use Spark to explore or analyze data interactively, you're going to use a notebook to do that. Notebooks enable you to combine text, images, and code written in multiple languages to create this interactive artifact that you can share with others and collaborate with. Another way to move and transform data, though, is going to be by using data pipelines. Data pipelines use the same user interface from Azure Data Factory with its own product experience inside of Fabric. So maybe you are a Data Factory user already. There's going to be a product experience for you that has nothing to do with Spark. So you can kind of have your own centralized location to go through, create your pipelines, create your data flows, and continue to move and transform data without necessarily having to know any of those code languages that are going to be used with Spark. So Data Factory is out there. Data pipelines, though, are going to define a sequence in, uh, of activities that orchestrate so uh, an overall process. So usually by extracting data from one source and moving it into the destination, and usually going to do some sort of transformational logic along the way. Pipelines are commonly used as a part of the ETL process that ingests transactional data from this operational data store into an analytical data store. So one analytical store that we haven't talked about yet and deserves conversation as a what a fabric is, is going to be the lake house. The foundation of Microsoft Fabric is a lake house, which is built on top of one lake scalable storage and uses Apache Spark and SQL compute engines for big data processing. A lake house is a unified platform that combines flexible, scalable storage of a data lake 
and as well as the ability to query and analyze a data from a data lake house. Now, a lake house is going to present as a database and is going to be built on top of a data lake using delta format tables. So Lakehouse combines the SQL-based analytical capabilities of relational data warehouse and the flexibility and scalability of a data lake. Lakehouses store all the data formats and can be used with various analytics tools and programming languages, but as a cloud-based solution, a Lakehouse can scale automatically and provide high availability and disaster recovery. Some of the benefits, including in a Lakehouse, are going to be using Spark and SQL engines to process large-scale data sets. Lakehouses support ACID or atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability transactions through Delta Lake formatted tables for consistency and integrity. And then Lakehouses are are also a single location for data engineers, scientists, analysts uh, to be able to utilize and access the data. And they can do that with something known as a SQL endpoint. The SQL endpoint is going to be created whenever you provision a data lake house. And it's a read-only warehouse that's automatically generated upon the creation of a lake house in Fabric. Delta tables are created through the Spark in a lake house and are automatically discoverable in the SQL endpoint as tables. Uh, the SQL enables data engineers to build relational layers on top of physical data lakes and lake houses and expose it to analysis and reporting through different tools using the SQL connection strings. Now, that is just one way we can go through and use that. What we can also use is the Synapse Data Warehouse, or the warehouse is a traditional data uh, warehouse and supports the full transactional T-SQL capabilities like any enterprise data warehouse. So as opposed to the SQL endpoint where tables and data are automatically created, you are fully in control of creating tables, loading, transforming, querying your data in a data warehouse using either the Fabric Portal or T-SQL commands. So what are the differences? The lake house is going to be a read-only system-generated SQL endpoint for the lake house for T-SQL querying and serving. Supports queries and views on top of the lake house delta tables only. The warehouse is an ACID compliant full data warehousing transactions are going to be supported in T-SQL. So data engineers might get and spend most of their time in the lake house where a citizen developer would go through and maybe spend more time inside of a warehouse. A SQL developer might actually use both. So depending on your scope and what you do on a daily basis for your organization, you might deploy around in both or just one of those. So when you want to perform data science in Microsoft Fabric, there are key three features that are going to help you manage your work. Notebooks, experiments, and models. Data scientists mainly work in notebooks to write, edit, and run code. Notebooks in Microsoft Fabric run on top of Apache Spark Compute, and Apache Spark is this open source parallel processing framework for large scale data processing and analytics. Notebooks are actually automatically attached to a Spark Compute, so when you run a cell in a notebook, you are going to go and start a Spark session, and this session is going to persist when you run subsequent cells. The Spark session will go automatically stop after some time to save costs, but you can manually stop the session as well to be able to save some money. Now, in order to use a notebook, you're most likely going to be using one of the different languages like PySpark or Python for Spark or Spark R, which comes from the R language. To get access to data, you connect a notebook to a lake house and read the data as a Spark or a Pandas data frame. The option you choose will depend on the libraries you would work with. Now, once we've gone through there, we can go through and create our experiments and create our machine learning models to be able to predict and have predictive analytics inside of the lake house architecture. Now we also have RTA or real-time analytics, and this provides this end-to-end -end streaming solution for high-speed data analysis across the entire Fabric service. This is optimized to time series data and supports automatic partitioning and indexing of any data format. So Synapse Real-Time Analytics in Fabric is going to use a KQL database, uh, which is going to be used to access with the KQL or Custo query language. It's going to be a powerful tool for analyzing data. Real-Time Analytics is a fully managed service that's optimized um, uh, for streaming time series data. And with RTA, you're able to go and get consistent performance, search different types of data, structured, unstructured, semi-structured. And additionally, it has some fully integrated and entire suite of fabric capabilities that allow for tight integration of the loading and visualization as well. 
In summary, Microsoft Fabric's unified management and governance make it easy for data professionals to work together on data projects. Fabric's going to remove data silos and the need to access multiple systems and enhance collaboration between data professionals. With Fabric, data professionals are going to work together in the same SaaS product to better understand and identify the need in each other and the business in general. Further, data analysts can now have a greater context and ability to transform data up stream with data factory so far i absolutely love what i've seen in fabric i'm excited to go through continue to explore continue to learn now does this mean that a general power bi user is going to maybe go start using spark right away maybe not but it's going to enable that user to potentially have the ability to do so again based on your organization's needs so hopefully this allows you to go through and explore something you haven't worked with before maybe you want to go through and start doing some data cleanup with power queries or moving data with uh, data uh, pipelines so we have lots of different options all integrated into one singular workspace now. Look for many more videos, including deeper dives and demos around the product coming very soon from the entire Pragmatic Works team. To make sure you are going to get those videos as quickly as they come out, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this one, understand Fabric a little bit better, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.